daylilies. Perhaps there is no other plant that has been bred more for ornamental purposes than daylilies. Perhaps the roses. Currently, there's over 60,000 cultivars of daylilies that have been registered. 60,000. Uh, some are evergreen, some are deciduous, some are short, some are tall. But really, there's two main groups of daylilies that we have. We have the tetraploids, which is this one here. This is a tetraploid, and we have diploids. So tetraploids have four sets of chromosomes. Diploid have two sets of chromosomes. So us as humans, we're diploid organisms. Tetraploid daylilies have been exposed to a chemical process to double the amount of chromosomes they have. So think back to your uh, middle school, perhaps freshman year biology class, where you learn how to do Punnett squares, you learned about Mendel and the, the white flower and the purple flower and you did the crosses. Imagine that with four sets of chromosomes. So there, there's all sorts of opportunities for genetic recombination when we look at uh, breeding tetraploid daylilies. And what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how we breed seed for daylilies. All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, so this is the daylily we just saw. This is a seedling that I've grown. It does not have a name. I may register it with the uh, American Hemerocallus Society because it does have some nice characteristics. We'll talk about daylily characteristics um, here in a few minutes. But what I want to do is, is show you how we pollinate these guys. And I've actually already pollinated this one, but I'm going to show you how to do it on this one again. So what we see here, these, this right here, this is the female part. This is the pistil. So the part that's sticking out a little bit further right here, this is pistil, this is female. These parts here with the pollen, these are stamen. I'll see if I can get that in focus. You can see the pollen there, you can see the pollen where it's falling on the petals. And what you do to pollinate one of these guys, you take the pollen from one, so basically I just tore stamen off, and then as the pistil becomes receptive, you'll know it's receptive because at the tip it'll get moist or sticky looking. It'll almost look like a sap on the top. And you can actually put the pollen on there a little before it's technically receptive. And you're just going to brush the pollen on there. And that's it. So this flower has been pollinated. Notice I did not say uh, fertilized. So there's a difference between pollination and fertilization. So pollination is what we just did. Pollination is the transfer of the pollen to the female part, the pistil. So if fertilization occurs, so fertilization, think back to basic biology, sperm and egg unite. So when the pollen travels down this pollen tube, the ovary is actually down here at the base all right so right in here so what we'll see happen is if we had fertilization take place so if if the pollen grain unites with it with the egg the petal will fall off you can see here this one's starting to shrivel up this was yesterday's uh, daylily and these popped up today we got several more coming but the petal will fall off and this will begin to swell and it'll produce a fruit and that fruit will turn a brownish color eventually and then it'll have seeds in it we can harvest that seed pod or that fruit take the seeds out and that will be next year's seedlings that we will put in the garden so let's take a look at some of the characteristics that make these daylilies desirable so that what, what we're looking at here this is a tetraploid daylily so i came back out later in the evening uh, so this guy looked a whole lot better earlier today but you can see here he's starting to to fade away on the edges a little bit but you can still see the desirable characteristics uh, has a green or or chartreuse throat and then we have this maroon coloring and then this white or beige coloring also i want you to notice the the ruffles or the tufts around the edges of the petals this is also desirable so this three-toned coloring is, is something that we want to look for. This is really nice here. Notice that 
the colors really don't bleed into each other. There's a, a kind of a definite line where the red starts and the white starts so that that meeting between the two colors is, is very distinct. And also you have this uh, on the edge, the, the ruffles or the tufts here, they go back to that red color as well and it doesn't bleed off into the white. So that's something that would be desirable. I'm gonna move to the side and uh, I, I do need to get in here and, and weed and spray and put down some new pine straw. My, this is my, my trial garden for my tetraploids. And uh, sometimes it gets neglected because I'm really just interested in, in flower characteristics and, and some of the grounds work associated with having a decent landscape uh, can get neglected in here. So, so my, my goose grass and stuff and Bermuda popping up in here, just that's not what we're looking at, folks. I want you to look at um, the number of buds and the branching. So we have this nice branch here and one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, this... There's some more back up in here, maybe a dozen more uh, flowers that we're going to have on this one branch. And this was the one from yesterday. There was one here two days ago. Uh, this will probably be the one for tomorrow. And it's multi-branched. So we're going to have a couple different flower sets on here. So this in particular uh, daylily here again. Uh, this is a tetraploid. Most of these are seedlings. I did, however, buy this one. Uh, so this is the black horn daylily. Uh, excuse me, I did not buy this one. I remember now. Uh, so my mother-in-law got me this as a birthday present. Uh, so thank you, Catherine, for that uh, because it is really starting to show off, and we'll get some nice seedlings off of this. Let's move over. Uh, this is another one. Uh, I had two that were purchased, and the rest of them here are seedlings. Uh, this one here, same characteristics. It, we're going to have a flower here tomorrow. Uh, this one was yesterday's flower. And so there's a dozen or so flowers here. Notice the, the nice branching. We have uh, buds going all the way up the branching. So this is another named cultivar. Uh, and so I have, I don't know, maybe two dozen in here right now. And I'll filter through these. I'll find the desirable ones and then... Uh, the ones that don't have those characteristics that we're looking for, uh, we'll probably just pull them up and put a new seedling in its place. This is a promising seedling that started to bloom today. Uh, and, and here again, this is late afternoon, so these flowers are, are starting to fade a little bit. Uh, but we have that nice yellow sartreuse colored throat and earlier today it was more distinct we had a really dark uh, midsection and in lighter petals we had some ruffles or tufts out on the end of these petals but uh, the main thing that i'm excited about with this one is I'll move the side so we can see here is this nice branching and look at the the bud clusters on the ends of these branches i mean one two three four five six seven eight there's nine on this one there's one, two, five or so here, six, four, and back here, one, two, three, four, five, seven or eight, back here on this back one. Uh, so this one's, and we've got multiple stocks coming up as well. So uh, this one is promising. This is a seedling. It does not have a name yet. Uh, but those are some of the characteristics we want to look at when we're looking at daylilies couple more thoughts on daylilies here. I just wanted to share some general information with you. Uh, the genus for daylily is Hemerocallis, and that is from the Greek root meaning beauty and day. Hemerocallis, beauty and day. Um, or, or day and beauty, excuse me. Day, day is Hemerocallis beauty. Uh, and so that's where the, the genus name comes from for daylily. If you're interested in growing daylilies, uh, I would encourage you to get on Google or Facebook and just type in uh, your region or your county and then daylily society. For example, here in North Alabama, if I were to type in North Alabama daylily society, we have a daylily society and I would be almost certain where you're at, wherever you may be, you're gonna see that as well. Also, the American Hemerocallis Society, if you're interested, you can reach out to those guys and they should be able to uh, put you in contact with somebody in your area that either breeds or grows daylilies.
Folks, if you hadn't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It helps us a lot here on the channel. Until next time, this is The Plant Doctor.